Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid and today I have the 2000 Honda Odyssey in the workshop and it's got an oil leak and I'm going to diagnose this and uh, hopefully it'll be something different than uh, the last couple of oil leaks that I've dealt with. Uh, but if not, we will make a video on it and anyway. Alright, so underneath the vehicle here and let's take a look. You can already see, uh, this is the, the transmission actually. Um, the uh, left side of the vehicle is here the driver's side is here and the the passenger side is here so uh right here you can already see there's some oil on the transmission you can see uh another drop of oil here and yeah oil has been dripping sort of on the passenger side of the engine but also if we come over to the driver's side um you can see there's you know a drop of oil right here um just underneath the oil drain plug um, uh, there, were, there were problems with the oil drain plug, um, and I, I took care of those in a previous video. Um, so I know that that's not uh, the cause of it. Plus, it would not be that. If the oil was just leaking from there, um, that wouldn't explain the oil that I'm seeing higher up on the oil drain pan, or the oil pan. <clears throat> so uh, what, what, I'm, what I can see as I look along the side of the oil pan here is that the whole oil pan is is covered in oil first of all so i want to look higher than that um i'm going to look on both sides of the engine and you can see above the the oil pan right there the aluminum of the of the block is just very very clean it's there's nothing on it there's no dirt there's there's no caked anything so that's uh that's really really nice um but it's not a clue for us so we kind of have to look elsewhere so whenever I diagnose oil leaks on an engine, I always start as high up on the engine as possible because if you start repairing things on the bottom of the engine and the leak is actually coming from the top, you're, you know, you're really not repairing anything. The oil leaking from the top of the engine, of course, is going to drip down to the bottom of it and, uh, and really confuse you. So always start at the very top. And right now we are looking at the... We're looking underneath sort of the, the um, well, it's basically the side of the engine, uh, the driver's side of the engine. There are various accessories there. I don't want to start naming them, but you can see, very caked up. All right, here we are on the top of the engine. This is the the top of the area we were just looking at, and you can see how there's uh, there's oil and and grease caked on on here, and there's dirt. There's dirt caked over top of it. And this is basically the valve cover right here. And the gasket is between it and the cylinder head, which is beneath it. So what we're looking at right there that's all caked in dirt and grease is the cylinder head. The top of the engine looks relatively clean otherwise. You know, you don't really see, uh, you're not seeing oil splashed all over these areas. And you know, it, it, you, would, you would think that, that a valve cover or a blown valve cover or leaking valve cover would would cause a lot more oil to go all over the place but this is actually more of an insidious kind of a leak really because the valve cover the the the, the valve train isn't really under a, a lot of pressure when the engine's running in fact it's actually under a vacuum when you're when you're idling you can tell you can test that by starting your engine taking off the uh, the oil cap and you can put a little like paper towel or something over here you'll feel it kind of sucking in but then as as the throttle opens the engine accelerates uh the, the pressure changes and you'll actually get some air air pushing out of here so when you've got the cap on you uh you, the, these alternating um, um pressure differentials you know that that's going to push oil out very very sporadically very slowly and the oil is going to going to sort of leak in 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 small amounts and it's going to trickle all over the engine and it's going to it's going to travel you know through capillary action it's going to it's going to make its way you know as, as you're driving along gravity is going to the gravity and wind are going to whip the oil you know basically as as far and wide as it can go and it'll fall down you know it'll fall down the sides of the engine here it'll fall down the sides of the engine there and get down to the bottom like it's doing and make things look like you know you might have an oil pan gasket that's leaking but really it's actually the valve cover gasket so i'm going to go ahead and change these the first step is to remove the air filter cover there are four nuts they're eight millimeter or number two phillips but sometimes they're a little rusty so i just kind of prefer the eight millimeter because i also have an extension for it and this this lovely thing 
All right, so the next step is to uh, take the intake boot off. I'm gonna unhook the cruise control here. There are just a bunch of cables. These are these are coolant bypass lines, by the way. Um, just just a couple of lines that are basically in these in these grommets and these holders here all along it. And there's a wire wire there. Only one rigid tube right here. You just kind of pull this clamp back. Actually. We may not even need to pull it all the way back. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe we can just kind of, I can pinch it open while I pull, pull the tube out here and just leave the clamp on there. That way I don't lose it, you know? Loosen the ring clamp. There we go. So next we're gonna remove things from the throttle body here. There's a little vacuum hose. of sensors here. You'll notice this sensor is actually melted on mine. This is where you would normally disconnect it. Um, since mine's melted, I, I think I'm just gonna have to disconnect the whole map sensor from the throttle body. I believe there's like an O-ring. But pretty sure, yeah, I, I can probably reuse that O-ring. So I'm gonna set that aside in a safe place. One more sensor down here. Uh, at this point, there are actually two coolant lines connected. Uh, there's one going in from the side and then there's one coming um, out from the bottom. And we'll deal with, we'll probably deal with those last. Um, right now I'm going to take off the throttle cables. You've got two options for doing this. You can either uh, loosen these nuts and that way you can just take them off or you can just take the uh, the bracket off. I think I'm going to take the bracket off. That way I just don't have, I, I don't have to adjust them when I put them on later. Cause you know, if you, if you do take these off and this, these back nuts move at all, that's going to affect the adjustment of the throttle cable. So rather than have to even deal with that, I'm just going to take the bracket off. It's just easier, but you can do it any way you want. So now that that's loose, we can get our throttle cables off. This is the cruise control cable. And you just, in order to get those off, you can see there's a little slot right there. And you just kind of push it through, push it forward, and it just kind of slides through that slot. Same thing for the accelerator. I'll disconnect this vacuum line while I'm here. So here's a better look at those coolant lines. Um, I'm gonna stuff a rag underneath them because they are gonna leak when I disconnect them. Come in here, grab this little clip and pull it back. Sometimes it's easier said than done. My rag is probably in the wrong place here. It should be right there. Okay, just a tiny bit of coolant. That's, that's not too bad. And now, the lower one's probably be, gonna be a little bit more. You could also wait to remove these coolant lines until you take the whole uh, intake manifold off it. It actually would probably be easier. Because you can just kind of flip the, cool, the whole thing upside down and just, or just kind of get at it a little easier. But this is the way I'm doing it. And there you go. So to finish getting the uh, intake manifold off, we're gonna Remove these vacuum lines from back here. These can just pull off. There is a vacuum line that goes to the brake booster on the back here. That's pretty easy. A little sen one sensor right here. And on the far corner over here, there's another little line. It actually won't come off easily because it's uh, it, there's there's not enough room for it to flex. I believe we can kind of if you push it back like I'm doing here, it'll come. It'll finally come off. Now we just have bolts. They're all 12 millimeter. There you go. Whole thing just comes free. You can set that aside. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. Um, first up, remove the connectors on the coils. And we can 
You need a six millimeter Allen socket and a ratchet. That's the easiest. And it's easier just to use the socket without the ratchet to <coughs> remove the bolt. Don't drop them. I'll get that with a magnet later on. There we go. The coil and spark plug just comes right off. I'm going to set these in order. So next step, we'll remove two bolts from this rail. So we've got one, two, three, four, five bolts to get off, and um, I'll use my ratchet for these bottom ones. They're turning pretty free, so I think I can just get them out by hand. Looks like that middle bolt is shorter. Two end bolts are about the same. Yeah, same in the front. There we go. There's a little hose on this valve cover right here. So we gotta remove that. Kind of breaking it free, twisting it like that. And I can get in behind it and pry it off. Come in here with a big screwdriver and sort of just get the screwdriver in and turn it, and that'll just put some pressure and just like that. Immediately take a look at the at the gasket, and you can see that it's wet. The gasket's wet all along here. Right here, hopefully you can see with the light shining, it, the wetness didn't go all the way to the edge of this gasket, at least right now, but you can see that there's oil residue built up around it. So that's that's where it's been leaking but it hasn't been leaking from the top it's been sealing pretty good up on the top so there you go I'm going to clean these, the surface off a little making sure not to get any dirt down inside there so yeah this uh this engine looks pretty good for 200,000 miles i must say this is this is what you want to see you definitely don't want to see it redder and you don't want to see any any sludge built up here whatsoever but uh, my buddy's been uh, changing his oil regularly which is good so I've got a clean shop towel laid over the the top of the engine there I'm just gonna put the valve cover on it and I'm gonna pop out these spark plug boots with a screwdriver just really carefully I like that being careful not to mar up the aluminum there. Looks like this old gasket's really melted into place after 200,000 miles. Not as cracked and hard as I thought it would be. You can see it's it's pretty pliable in most places. So far it hasn't cracked. It's still bad. But yeah. So out with the old and with the new. It's pretty much the same all the way around. It's not like pre-molded or anything for the corners. So I just pop it in. Of course a little tab goes that, that's on the bottom ceiling surface obviously otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it inside the channel and hopefully it goes without saying but you know I'll clean the the top off a little bit right and my new casket came with some new spark plug grommets as well okay so there we go I just kind of used a uh, like a number 27 socket to with a hammer to kind of just you know tap those in evenly over on the bench uh, number 27 socket seemed to seem to be just the perfect size. Maybe a 28 would have been better, would have been better, but whatever you can find. So cool. Now we just 
put the cover back on. Making sure those uh, the spark plug tubes are just uh, making sure the, the new grommets are, are around the entire spark plug tubes and didn't get pinched by them or, or something. My new gasket set came with uh, new new bolt grommets here. Bolt covers, bolt covers with grommets, whatever they are. Getting the old grommets off the, the old bolts is actually tricky because there's a little, there's that. So I think I'm gonna cut them off. Cut them off with a pair of side cutters. That, that grommet is uh, no longer pliable enough to, to stretch over that. So, there we go. New grommet put back on. So we're gonna torque these down to eight and a half foot pounds and the sequence is gonna be one, two, three, four, I'll probably just do one, two, three, four on each one just to get it seated down gradually until I get some, until I can feel some resistance there. Whoa! <laughs> do not hit the positive cable when you do that. There we go. Put the oil filler cap back on. I'll put this hose back on. Put the spark plugs back on. Not the spark plugs, the uh, put the coils back on. Coil bolts. Doing these snug. Reconnect the coils. On the far side, there's a there's a little cover here which kind of needs to be well, well the uh, wiring harness that ra what was a rail on the other side is just a big cover over here and it's actually covering this PCV tube. So I will get that off. And it looks like there's a little bolt here as well. That's just holding the power steering line up there. Disconnect the coils. I think I'll, I'll stick it underneath the power steering line. It's just kind of out, out of the way. I think we can remove this now. Oh, looks like one of the little vacuum tubes is attached to it. I'll just do that. Let's get the coils off. Just crack them. come and crack off these bolts. And we can pry the cover up off carefully. I do not like the way this one looks as much as I liked the way the first one looks. Not at all. So yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of gunk in there. 
the uh, gasket's in much worse shape. You can see it was leaking all along the back there. So that's, that's most of our oil leak right there. Okay, so yes, there is a lot of varnish on, on these rocker arms, on these valves, but you can see that the, the machine surfaces, the, uh, the, the rolling surfaces right there, that roll against the cams, the cam lobes, those are clean. So uh, I'm not too worried that this, that this valve train is getting starved of oil. I think if, if, you know, if it was, it would have been seized up by now. Um, I actually took a, a few minutes to go look online and uh, about this problem because it is unusual for one side to be a lot, a lot more varnished than the other. And the consensus seems to be that, that it's down to uh, this PCV valve right here. Uh, the PCV valve is, is basically just like a, a check valve and it allows uh, blow-by gases that escape th um, through the pistons and, and go down into the crankcase and, and pressure up the, cr the crankcase. It allows those blow-by gases to escape back into the intake manifold where they can get reburned by the engine. And they actually come out of this side, this, this side of the, the rocker assembly and this side over here actually has a fresh air breathe, uh, breather valve. It actually goes into the, into the air snorkel before the throttle assembly. So it actually gets fresh air through here. This is the intake of the air on this side of the valve cover. That's why, so n none of the blow-by gases ever travel up into here. There's always pressure pushing it down, pushing them down and making them, th and making them come up to this side of the engine where they go through this check valve and, and go back into the, uh, into the intake manifold to get reburned. And this, this is a vacuum check valve. It's not always open. I don't believe this PCV valve has ever been changed. And again, this engine has 200,000 miles on it. So um, you're, you should change these about every 100,000 miles. I'm gonna go ahead and change this one. So as you can see, I've got my new spark plug seals pounded in here. Got my new gasket pressed in. And I'm gonna put the new valve cover back, or the, the valve cover back on, I should say. Got my bolts already prepared with the new gaskets, or the new grommets. I've tightened them down about halfway with, uh, with a ratchet, and now I'm gonna come in and torque them. So this is the PCV valve here, <clears throat> and so you can see it's pretty gummed up. Uh, the, this is just a, a, a basically a check valve, and the way you test it is you shake it, and if it doesn't rattle, then it might be sticking. I could hear it rattle slightly there, but you can hear it's not really it's not rattling. So that's why I'm going to replace it. So I've got those coils back on there. I'm just going to tighten them down. So I've got the new PCV and its and its hose connected to it, and I'm going to put this cover in here over it. And this little vacuum line snapped into the side of the cover. The power steering line had a little a bolt with a bracket back here. Bring the electrical harness back over. Reconnect those coils. So we're going to reinstall the intake manifold now. Vacuum hose went there. Put that PCV hose on over here on this side. We have this hose with the brackets coming along over to here. There's an electrical connector on the back there. And you got these nuts. So you have to torque these down to 16 foot pounds. And the sequence is one, two, uh, three, four, that's five, that's six, that's seven, eight, and that's nine.
this uh, clamp over here. I'm gonna reconnect these coolant hoses. Let's go to the bottom of the idle air control valve. The other one was here. These two electrical connectors. Well, yeah, you can see those. This vacuum line. So I'm going to put the map sensor back on. Here's the uh, the O-ring for it, which I'm going to reuse and. Here's that little sensor. Of course, you would just be reconnecting it right there. So I'm going to reconnect the throttle cables here. Okay, there's that one. Oh, right there. Okay, let's put the intake boot back in. There's an air bypass tube. Runs to the top to the front valve cover. Harness goes here. Don't forget there's a tube back here. I think we're good. Now we can put the airbox back on. Actually, that cruise control cable comes up here. Well, now for the moment of truth. Let's start the engine. Something isn't quite right. So, here's the problem right here. The cruise control cable kind of got pulled out a little bit. And that was causing it to uh, always pull the throttle open a little bit. Okay, attempt number two. Okay, that sounded great. That was basically how it was before I attempted any repairs at all. So, performance is the same, engine's running fine, job well done.